There is a temptation when returning to any classic arcade genre to make it more complicated. For forward-moving rail shooters, this often means RPG elements that force you to continuously grind for upgrades in order to have a chance in later levels. Astro Dogs, on the other hand, is the first one of these games that I've played in a while that understands how to build on the genre without breaking it. It adds new mechanics and presents a fresh spin on a few classic ones. It isn't perfect by any means, but it is hard not to be taken in by Astro Dog's bold style and fun presentation. You play as Combo, who, along with several other dogs, must save their solar system from a hyper-capitalistic dog regime. The characters, both your teammates and enemies, are all over the top and feature charming writing. For example, at one point during an introduction to a level, the communication line goes dead for an extended period of time before a member of your team finally speaks up and apologizes for having been on mute. Of course, there are plenty of nods to the obvious Star Fox influences as well, which makes Astro Dogs that best form of parody, in that it is itself an excellent entry in the genre of the thing it satirizes. The world itself takes heavy influence from Vaporwave and early 3D rendering. Bright pastel colors populate every level, while each maintaining their own unique identity. The music is likewise incredibly catchy, and I've been disappointed to see that thus far, there doesn't seem to be an official soundtrack release. From an overall presentation perspective, it's hard to do anything but sing phrases. Gameplay is generally in line with what you'd expect from classic rail shooters like Star Fox. Your ship flies forward automatically, and you can move up, down, left, and right as you dodge obstacles and line up shots. Your range of movement left and right is quite extreme. This winds up being presentationally satisfying, but depth perception along the far edge of your ship's movement range can be a little difficult. A camera that's a bit more aggressive about staying directly behind your ship would certainly be of help here. That being said, there were only a few points at which I felt I needed to use the extreme range of movement in a way that caused me significant difficulties. Where gameplay really excels is in combat. While you do of course have your standard rapid-fire attack, you will also build up energy to use various special weapons and abilities. There are the expected weapons, like a multi-lock missile and an area of effect bomb. But there is also a sustained beam weapon and a shield that can destroy anything it comes in contact with. You also have a separate instinct meter that can be expended to slow time and allow you to freely aim in any direction without moving your ship. On Switch, this can be done with gyro aiming, which works very well and feels extremely intuitive. Even the classic barrel roll gets a fresh take by not just deflecting enemy fire, but sending it right back at them. In fact, a well-timed barrel roll can be an extremely effective way of dealing with a large wave of enemies. As mentioned at the outset, this isn't a game where you can upgrade your ship to power through a difficult section. It's entirely a game about skill, the whole way through. Bosses in particular sometimes took me a few tries to really come to grips with their attack patterns. That being said, they're all pretty well designed. My only real issue with any of the bosses was one late game boss. Every other boss requires you to shoot yellow weak spots to then expose their primary weakness. This boss still has those yellow weak spots, but shooting them won't do anything unless you realize that several large buttons on the boss can also be shot in a specific pattern to make him vulnerable first. It is actually a really good boss fight, but it's so different from anything else in the game that I briefly wondered if I'd broken the game in some way when it didn't seem to take any damage from any of its apparent weak points. The individual levels are all very well designed and unique, too. While there isn't ultimately that much enemy variety, each level does have its own environmental obstacles that are largely exclusive to that specific stage. If you know exactly what you're doing and can take out every boss in a single try, you can likely finish Astro Dogs in a little over an hour, but it'll take a lot of practice before you can reach that point. Without going into spoilers, there is also some additional hidden content locked behind your performance in each level. This is a game that understands, on a seemingly effortless level, what makes the genre work. It's able to build on those concepts while still staying entirely true to that core experience. Simultaneously, it offers an incredible package in terms of visuals and sound. I have some minor complaints about the camera in conjunction with the movement system and some very select boss design issues. But overall, it's hard not to absolutely love Astro Dogs. Even with a couple of blemishes, this is easily one of the best games of this type currently available on Switch.
This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.